what's the biggest mystery or gap in understanding about evolution? Um, is it the Cam Cambrian explosion? And if so, how do we, what's our best understanding of how to explain, uh, what, first of all, what is it? Um, in my understanding, in the short amount of time, maybe 10 million years, 100 million years, something like that, a huge number of animals, a variety, diversity of animals were created. Um, anyway, th there's like five questions in there. Yeah. Is that the yeah. biggest mystery? No, I don't think it's evolution? a particularly big mystery really anymore. I mean, it, it's there are still mysteries about why then, and I've just said sulfate being washed into the oceans is one. It needs oxygen, and oxygen levels rose around that time. Um, so probably before that, they weren't high enough for animals. What we're seeing with the Cambrian explosion is the beginning of pr predators and prey relationships. We're seeing we're seeing uh, modern ecosystems, and we're seeing arms races, and we're seeing um, we're, we're seeing the, the full creativity of evolution unleashed. Mm -hmm. And the, so I talked about the boring billion. Nothing happens for for you know one and a half one billion years, one and a half billion years. Um, the assumption, and this is completely wrong. This assumption is is the, then that you know evolution works really slowly, and that you need billions of years to affect some small change, and then another billion years to do something else. And it's, it's completely wrong. Evolution gets stuck in a stasis, and it stays that way for tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years. And, and Stephen Jay Gould used to argue this. He called it punctuated equilibrium, but he was doing it to do with animals and to do with the, the, the last 500 million years or so, where it's much less obvious than if you think about the entire planetary history. And then you realize that the first 2 billion years was bacteria only. You have the origin of life, 2 billion years of just bacteria, oxygenic photosynthesis arising here. Then you have a, a global catastrophe, snowball earths and great oxidation event, and then another billion years of nothing happening, and then some, some, some period of upheavals, and then another snowball earth, and then suddenly you see the Cambrian explosion. This is long periods of stasis where the world is in a stable state and is not, lean, is not geared towards increasing complexity. It's just everything is in balance. And only when you have a catastrophic level, global level problem, like a snowball earth, it forces everything out of balance and there's a tipping point and you end up somewhere else. Now, the idea that that evolution is slow is wrong. It can be incredibly fast, um, and I mentioned earlier on that you can, you know, in theory, it would take half a million years to invent an eye, for example, from a light sensitive spot. It doesn't take long to convert, uh, you know, one 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 kind of tube into a tube with knobs on it, into a tube with 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 arms on it, and then multiple arms, and and then at one end is a head with a, it starts out as a swelling. It's you know, it's not difficult intellectually to understand how these things can happen. Um, it, it boggles the mind that it can happen so quickly, but we're used to human timescales. And what we need to talk about is generations of things that live for a year in the ocean. Um, and, and then a million years is a million generations. And, and the amount of change that you can do, you can affect in, in that period of time is, is enormous. And we're dealing with large populations of things where selection is sensitive to pretty small changes and can... Uh, so again, when, as soon as you throw in the competition of predators and prey, and you're ramping up the, the, the scale of evolution, it's not very surprising that it happens very quickly when the environment allows it to happen. So I don't think there's a big mystery. There's lots of details that need to be filled in. I mean, the, the big mystery in, in biology is consciousness. The big mystery in biology is consciousness. Well, intelligence is kind of a mystery too. Um, I mean, you said biology, not psychology. Because uh, from a biology perspective, it seems like intelligence and consciousness all are the same, like weird, like all the brain stuff. I don't see is... intelligence as necessarily that difficult, I suppose. I, I mean, I see it as a form of computing, and I don't know much about computing, so I... <laughs> You don't know much about consciousness either. So, I, I mean, I suppose, oh, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, that consciousness you do know a lot about as a human being. No, no. I mean, I, I think I can understand the wiring of a brain as a series of, in pretty much the same way as a computer in, in theory, um, in terms of 
um, the circuitry of it. The mystery to me is how this system gives rise to feelings, as we were talking about earlier on. Yeah, I just, I think, I think we oversimplify intelligence. I think the dance, the magic of reasoning is as interesting as the magic of feeling. Mm -hmm. we, we tend to think of reasoning as like very, uh, running a very simplistic algorithm. I think reasoning is re the, the interplay between memory, whatever the hell is going on, the unconscious mind, all of that. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to diminish it in any way at all. Like obviously, it's extraordinarily, exquisitely complex, and uh, but but I don't see a logical difficulty with how right. it works. Yeah. No. I. I mean, I agree with you, but I sometimes, um, yeah, there's a big cloak of mystery around consciousness. I mean, let me compare it with with classical versus quantum physics. The you know classical physics is logical and you can understand <laughs> the, yeah. the the kind of language we're dealing with it's it's almost at the human level we're dealing with stars and things that we can see and when you get to quantum mechanics and things it's practically impossible for the human mind to compute what is what just happened there <laughs> yeah um, i mean that that is the same it's like you understand mathematically the, the notes of a musical composition that's intelligence yes but why it makes you feel a certain way Mm. that is much harder to understand yeah that's that's really um but at the, it was it was interesting framing that that's a mystery at this at the core of biology i wonder who solves consciousness i tend to think consciousness will be solved by the engineer <laughs> meaning the person who right. builds it who tries keeps trying to build the thing uh versus uh, uh, biology is such a complicated system I feel like it's. Uh, I feel like the building blocks of consciousness, from a biological perspective, are like that's like the final creation of, of a human being. So you have to understand the whole damn thing. You said electrical fields, but like electrical fields plus plus everything, yes. the whole yeah. shebang. I'm inclined to agree. I mean, I, my my feeling is from my meager knowledge of the history of science is that the biggest breakthrough has usually come through from a field that was not related <laughs> to. Yeah. So, so if anyone, you know, it's not going to be a biologist who solves consciousness, uh, just because biologists are too embedded in 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 in, in the nature of, of of the problem, and then nobody's going to believe you when you've done it because nobody's going to be able to prove that this uh, this AI is in fact conscious and and, and sad. <laughs> in any case, and any more than you can prove that a dog is conscious and sad. Um, so it tells you that it is in good language, and uh, you must believe it. But I think most people will accept, if faced with that, that that's what it is. All of this uh, probability, though, of, of complex life. I, I, in one way, I think why it matters is that I, my, my expectation, I suppose, is that we we will be over the next 100 years or so, if we survive at all, that AI will increasingly dominate. And, and, and pretty much anything that we put out into space, going looking for other, well, for the universe, for what's out there, mm -hmm. will be AI. Won't be, won't be us. We won't be doing that. Or when we do, it'll be on a much more limited scale. I, I suppose the same would apply to a, any alien civilization. So perhaps rather than looking for signs of life out there, we should be looking for AI out there. But then we face the problem um, that I don't see how a planet is going to give rise directly to AI. I can see how a planet can give rise directly to organic life. And if the principles that govern the evolution of life on Earth apply to other planets as well, and I think a lot of them would, um, then the likelihood of ending up with a human-like civilization capable of giving rise to AI in the first place is massively limited. Once you've done it once, perhaps it takes over the universe and maybe maybe there's no issue. But it, it, it seems to me that the, the, the two are necessarily linked, that it, you're not going to just turn a sterile planet into an AI life form without the intermediary of the organics first. 
So you, you have to run the the, the full compute the evolutionary computation with the organics to create AI. How does AI bootstrap itself up without the aid, if you like, of an intelligent sure. designer? The origin of AI is going to have to be in the chemistry of a planet. 